can your imagination help create? Maybe you consider yourself an artist or a designer. Perhaps you like to create edible masterpieces <laughs> or funky machines or even a piece of music. Those are all amazing ways to use your imagination. But maybe you don't feel like you're creative. Maybe your stick figures look more like a pile of twigs. And when you try to play an instrument, the dog goes into hiding. <laughs> Truth is, we are all made in God's image to reflect a little bit of who God is. That means that no matter how you feel, you are creative. Maybe your imagination works in a different way. You might create an epic birthday party for your sister or a truce between two friends who are fighting. Maybe you even create a plan, bringing people together to pack lunches for kids who need them during the summer. There are so many ways to be creative. When you use your imagination to do something new, others can see God at work in you. Just dig in deep and shine like a star. That's why creativity is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud, it's all about living loud. Sometimes it's easy to feel like I've given all I got. Is there anything more? I get down, get stuck, boxed in, locked up. I gotta get moving, moving. Gotta get moving, moving. And all I see right in front of me are endless possibilities. Birds flying high and the planets in the sky. Hey, welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about creativity. While we take a look at the story of how everything began. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about creativity. Which is using your imagination to do something new. Looks like you're trying something new. It's supposed to be a... Actually, what do you think it is? Um, sea monster? No, it's supposed to be... Me. Oh. I'm a terrible artist. Hey, you don't need to be a great artist to be creative. You can find unique ways to solve problems or encourage people or create something no one has ever seen before. That's a relief. Actually, today's guest creates things no one has ever 
tasted before. Mmm, I like the sound of that. His name is Mac. He makes amazing cakes and treats. Please tell me he's going to bring in some of his creations. Yep. Hey, Mac, we're so excited to have you here in the Story Lab. It's great to be here. And we're also excited to have this. Yes. It's a vanilla cake that has a edible drip on it and even has candy on top. And you made this all from scratch, like nothing from a box. It's all from scratch. I'm impressed. Wow. So how did you get started baking? Well, I just made cookies one night during COVID and it was really fun. So how did baking turn into such a big thing for you? Well, one of my mom's friends actually had an anniversary coming up and she asked me to make her a cake. And once she posted it, it kind of just started from there. What do you enjoy most about baking? I really enjoy decorating and bringing smiles on people's faces, especially during COVID. All right, so what are some of your favorite bakes? Definitely a 10 year anniversary cake I did for this amazing organization called Heart for Africa. Basically, they asked me to make this huge three-tiered cake. It had so much candy and even had donuts on it, but it was so much fun. That is awesome. What would you say to kids who want to discover their own creativity? I would say that anyone can be creative, and if you have an idea, don't be scared to keep pursuing it. Is there any chance we could try making this cake deliciousness for ourselves? Sure thing. All right, let's all say it. Let's, let's make, make it. it. Okay, so first we have this pink icing, and this is called a rosette tip. So first thing we're gonna do is just make a small circle right here. You wanna try? Sure. Okay. Awesome. There you go. Okay, next we'll take this yellow color, and this is called a French tip. Then we'll just basically dot with this right here. There we go. And there we go. Look at that. Awesome. Next, we have this orange color, and it's just a circle tip. And then we'll basically just use this to fill in any spots that we haven't, that still have cake. There we go. Okay. Is it sprinkle time? I think it is. <gasps> Pass them over. Okay, you go first. Alrighty. A little bit. Huh. I gotta add some style to it. Absolutely. Well, awesome. Well, Mac, it's been amazing having you in the Story Lab. Thank you for teaching us how to decorate cakes. It's been so much fun. Mac, it is mind boggling how you can come up with something so incredible from nothing. Speaking of which, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the first chapter of Genesis, the very first book in the Bible. Usually, we do the story before the story now, but today, there is no story before the story. Because our story starts at the very beginning. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Hey, hey Erica. Erica. I need you to wrap your brain around something that seems impossible. Before time began, there was no time. There was nothing. No breath of air, no sliver of light, no thing to think a thought, except God. God was in the midst of nothingness, and God had a plan, an immense, breathtaking design in mind. God spoke into that dark nothingness and called out, Let there be light. And there was light. Just like a painter splashes color across a canvas, God flooded everything with brilliant light, and God saw, That's good. Then God separated the light from the dark. God called the light day and the dark night. Evening faded to night and then back to bright morning, the very first day. But God was just getting started. God said, Let there be a huge space between the waters. God made a place for the waters and created a beautiful arching sky above. Day and night made day two. Then God got to work again and said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into one place. 
let dry ground appear. Plains and mountains and valleys rose right up out of the sea. Then God said, Let the land produce plants and trees. Let me tell you, the ground went wild. God saw, That's good. Morning followed evening, day three. Then God said, Let there be lights in the huge space of the sky. Let them separate the day from the night. God hung up the sun and sent the earth spinning around it. God set the moon in place and flung the stars and planets into the deep reaches of space. Okay, I gotta geek out for just a minute. You know how ginormous our solar system is? Well, it would take two years traveling at the speed of light to cross it. But then think of our galaxy, the Milky Way. If the Milky Way were the size of the United States, our entire vast solar system would be as tiny as a teacup. And astronomers believe there could be two billion galaxies. Yeah, that's how immense and creative our God is. God looked at all the amazingness and saw. That's good. Evening and morning made day four. Now God was really on a roll. On day five, God said, Let the seas be filled with living things. Let birds fly above the earth, across the huge space of the sky. And on day six, God said, Let the land produce every kind of living creature. And God stepped back and saw, That is good. But day six wasn't finished yet. In all this incredible world God had made, there was nothing quite like God. So God said, Let us make human beings so that they are like us. Let them rule over the fish and the birds and all the creatures. God made people to reflect a little bit of who God is to the world. God's compassion and joy and creativity. God said, Have children, so there will be many of you. I am giving you every plant for food. Then God took a look at the whole creation and saw, It is very good. That was day five and day six. And on day seven, God rested from all that amazing, brilliant, creative work. The end. I cannot get past the whole two billion galaxies thing. God is so much bigger and so much more creative than we can ever imagine. That's so true. And even though we're such a tiny speck in the big picture, God knows and cares deeply for every single one of us. I mean, he had a big creative plan from the very beginning to one day send Jesus to rescue us. So what's, what's our part in the story? Well, God made you. And what's more, you're created to reflect a little piece of who God is to the world around you. God is endlessly creative, which means that whether or not you feel like it, you are creative. Maybe you can paint or draw or make up songs. But maybe your creativity is a little different, like figuring out unique ways to encourage your friends or solving complicated problems. Or making peace between people who disagree. Creativity can look like so many different things. If you aren't sure how God wired you to be creative, ask God to show you. And ask your friends and family too. Yeah, they may see something that you don't. I think you got it. Guess what? I'll see you next time. Bye, Bye Erica. So here's the thing. God created you so you can be creative. I'm extremely glad that God made Mac to be creative. I know, right? Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. Oh, good. I know. Yeah.